Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 11th Annual Communication Studies Alumni Speakers Panel. Um, I can't believe it's been 11 years, and I'm so excited that you're all here to listen to our panelists that have actually have come from some pretty far places um, to visit and to speak with you and share some um, advice, some guidance, um, reflect on their experience moving from Gavilan College oftentimes to universities and then now into their careers. 2018 I decided to take a break of work. I was already doing SQF and a lot of global certifications but I didn't have a, a degree so I came to Gavilan College so this became like a, a new world for me, really, a new opening. And when I came to uh, Ms. Besson class, the first time she was my, my first communications teacher, it just really clicked to me, like being, uh, you know, from a, a Hispanic and like my English, you know, I have always struggled with my English and feel like not very secure about it, like not very secure about how I communicate, how that affects my team, how that, uh, affects others, how others see me. Uh, so it was just uh, like she hooked me. <laughs> and, and then from there, I, you know, I said, I, I need to have this. I, I need to know more. I suspect that to some extent I'll kind of be the oddball in the group here as Denise was just saying because I didn't major in communications and I, I didn't get a certificate in communications. I majored in business for my associates, my bachelors and my masters. Um, but having said that, the classes that I took here in communications, and I'm going to call out interpersonal specifically, were probably the most impactful classes on my career. Uh, you get a lot of really useful information. And in interpersonal, I like that one a lot because you just get kind of a, a sampling of some different disciplines in communications as well. And so again, that class has been really, really powerful in my career. Messaging means it's my job to figure out the best way we can communicate with our customers and our prospects. So I have to find the, the best way to articulate the problem organizations have, why our solution is the best fit for that problem, and the value that customers will get from using our platform. So obviously, there are uh, you know, a lot of relevant things there when it comes to communications and the skills that you can learn in these classes apply directly to messaging because I have to figure out the best way to communicate. And on top of that, I then have to go codify it, write it down and put a messaging document somewhere so everyone in the company can go read that and figure out how they too can best communicate with customers and with prospects. I had such cool classes here at Gav that really taught me how to work in small groups with people, teams. I remember having to do public speaking and I was like, oh no, this is like everybody's fear, they say. And I really embraced that because no matter where you go, you will have to talk in front of people at some point, um, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's in a group setting, right? So I really embraced it. And I found that speaking in front of people, um, your words are very powerful, right? And so you can make or break people and you can really get a message across, which I thought was so beautiful and there's so much power in that. Um, and social work found me when I was working in LA at a group home um, and I met a bunch of social workers and I was like, what do you guys do? Um, and they do like the foundational work in our community, like taking care of our most vulnerable populations, you know, foster care youth, um, homelessness, um, abused kids. And I just thought, hey, my foundation of communication studies took me right to that place of being a social worker. I came home and I told my mom like, I met this amazing teacher and I want to be her. Like the way she commands the attention of a room and the way she communicates and articulates her words is everything that I need to be. So I took every class that Denise offered. <laughs> I just, I wanted to know everything that she knew, knew and the knowledge that she had, I wanted to soak up. So I took every class she offered and it really started like my career within everything that I do. I um, ended up going to De Anza and graduating from there, transferred to Sac State, and in that time, 
I had started a spray tanning business here in Gilroy, my hometown, and it kind of just blew up overnight. And I think that had to do also with my communication skills and the relationships that I built with a lot of people in this town and things like that. So I came home and I said, let me give this a shot. Let me see what I can do, how I can build this business to, you know, hopefully something big. I ended up, I still wanted to finish my education. I signed up to do um, ASU. I finished that. And at the same time, the business was just kind of growing. And so we moved into a 2,800 square feet um, building here in downtown Gilroy. And we started a full-fledged, me and my sister and my family, we started a full-fledged beauty salon. And I have 12 people who work there at the salon that I manage day in and day out. And at the same time, my mom is a real estate broker and I got my real estate license because I knew I wanted to do something where I could just talk to people. And I felt like I had good communication skills where I could build good relationships. And I um, did that. And then I had a little girl, I had a baby girl. And I said, well, what can I do to show her the world and still you know live my dreams and communicate and meet all these people and have fun and so i became a flight attendant <laughs> for southwest airlines so i am um, in every aspect of my career my relationships and the things that i've built and the the people that i know has all stemmed from my communication skills is a lot of times and i'm going to speak to the students in here you feel like you have to have it all figured out right away and I'm gonna apply for this job and I'm gonna go into this field and this is what it's gonna be like. So when I graduated from college, we had these things called the classified ads in this thing called the newspaper. And I remember searching for, what do I need a business degree, communication studies degree, and it's really overwhelming. And so that's why I said that. Because you could essentially go into business with a comm degree, you don't necessarily need a business degree. You could become what's called a corporate trainer, learning and development, that's teaching people in the corporate space. You're essentially teaching them using instructional design. Uh, you could become a counselor, a therapist even. Uh, what's, what's great about becoming a therapist is that you, you really just need the MF the, the MFT training at the end, but you can get a bachelor's in comm. Social workers, uh, fire, public safety, um, human resource managers. I tend to have a lot of human resource majors in my conflict resolution course that end up switching. Uh, realtors, if you're in, if you're into sales, that's it right there. Coaches, teachers, obviously teachers, um, and anyone who wants to work within a nonprofit. Communications is the number one skill of employers for 2024. And what I found at Google was that they prefer soft skills, communication skills, 60%, and your technical skills, like your STEM knowledge and coding, 40%. So 60-40, and actually some of the admin, um, someone else that I was speaking to at Google said actually it's about 70-30, because we can train you on the technical. Um, what we look for, specifically employers are looking, does this person have the potential to develop? Can this person take criticism, feedback well? Um, can, are they a good listener? do they, their group and team dynamics, right? How do they interact with the team? And if you've ever gone, uh, raise your hand if you've ever been on an interview panel before where you're interviewing with multiple people, right? So they look and then you make it to the next round, right? They wanna see, okay, hey, I really like this person, but let's see how they do with the team. And they look to see how, the, how you engage and how you communicate within that team. So I think that that's really important. Um, the ability to self-reflect, open to feedback, and how you resolve conflict, right? Leadership, all of those things, all of which can be found in our program um, here at Galvin College. So